Good morning, my friend. I hope you're doing well. It is almost May. I can't believe it. It's almost May of 2022. Um, it's about 5.50 in the morning, almost 6 o'clock, pitch dark outside. It's been a crazy, heavy rainstorm all night, which we desperately needed. If you live in a place like Nebraska, there's two kinds of farmers here. There's, there's farmers that have irrigation pivots on their ground. Um, if you've ever flown over farmland, you see those round fields. Those are round because if you dig a well and you put a pivot, uh, an irrigation system that can self, you know, perpetuate itself in a circle, basically with a diesel engine, they have these long irrigation um, devices that roll around in a, in a circle and they can irrigate a round field they can't irrigate a square field quite as well that's why um you see all those round shapes from the air as you fly over but there's there's farmers that have their own irrigation systems and then there's farmers that are what they call dry ground farmers that don't have any irrigation unless they truck it in and they depend on rain and so in nebraska it's been really dry coming through the spring it's been really dry and the farmers are suffering and they this is the time of year when they're planting and they need rain to set those seeds to doing their thing in the ground and and so we've been praying for rain and god's given us on the last couple days have been really bringing some good rain to farmlands here and i just we're grateful and thankful for that because our our patients here make their living off the the toil and and work from the earth and so we're grateful when it rains. Uh, our people like Jerry Deaver and our friends who are growing hay out there, the Walgreens growing corn, the friends and people that we know around us, our farmer friends, shout out to my friend Isaac. Um, we, we just know that they were depending on rain. The Melm cars growing po- popcorn down in southern Nebraska. We got, we got people growing crops and they needed rain, so we're grateful for that. Hey, listen, I got a, I got a concept for you today. We did Mind Change March, right, where we just kind of talked about getting our minds sort of squared away and ready we did action april where we stopped talking about things and started doing stuff is what the home depot's commercial says and i hope that you were able to mo- to sort of motorize some parts of your life and get things moving i hope so we're having the best month we've ever had on the podcast so i know you're i know you're connecting i know you're sharing uh, the episodes but i would just ask you one more time if you're listening to this today and you say wow this is helpful to me if you say that to yourself, take a second and share the episode with one of your friends or a thousand of your friends, but but find one person who you think would benefit from this and just tap the three dots on your app or copy and paste the link and send it to them and say, hey, I'm actually listening to this podcast. It's helpful to me. Check it out because we need to grow. And the reason we need to grow is that people all over the world are hurting and people who are hurting, who are stuck, who are feeling frustrated, who don't know how their nervous system works and don't know how their faith system works and don't know how to tie those two things together in a way that helps them consistently be able to reproduce the ability to find hope in the darkness no matter what. That's what it's all about. That's what my new book, by the way, Hope is the First Dose, is all about. It's about how to develop a treatment plan in your own life that will prepare you for the hard times and help you find the light again during the hard times and help you find your way back to peace of mind, happiness, and joy again no matter what you're going through so that you can navigate this life in a better way, tell a better story with your life, and help other people find the light too. That's what it's about. Okay, it's a treatment plan for how to turn hopelessness into happiness. Well, listen, we did Mind Change March. We're doing Action April. Today I'm going to do a little quiet time with you just for a few minutes. Um, and we're going to get ready to do, I guess we can call it Remodel May. So there, there's some stuff in my life if I'm real honest with you, if you could see not just my voice and, and my books and all the things I put out there publicly, but if you could see my inside life, you would know there's some things I need to square away. I'm not everything I need to be, and I'm, I'm frustrated over and over as, as my life goes by with the same problems, and I have the same issues that I haven't put to bed, and it's time to remodel some of those areas of my life, and at least it's got some, all of us have some, everybody does, and I just, I, I want to think about the idea of what we've done with this house here on Moon River. We came in, and it was great, had good bones, but there was some stuff that was outdated and some stuff that needed to be improved and we needed another bedroom and we needed another bathroom and and we just remodeled it so that the construction crews came in and broke down walls and tore things out and took some things that were good but needed to be different and they and they they just they moved them removed them cut them out and replaced them and so now we've got a house that's working better for our family for the time being it's it's, it's remodeled and when you remodel something it requires some 
some cutting. It requires some, some pain, some busting out walls. It requires some inconvenience of several months of us living in, in one room and then moving to another room and having our boxes in the garage and then moving them to the shop and then moving them back. And, and just for a year and a half, we were just nomads in our own house. We had, you know, had sheets of plastic hanging everywhere. We didn't have a kitchen for about four months. We were living out of a microwave and a, a coffee maker in the garage for a while when we needed to eat something. And it was a, it was a mess and it was frustrating. And it's left us sort of in a kind of traumatized state for a few months. It's tough. It's it's not easy to go through something like that. And it sounds silly because it's such a blessing to be able to do it. But when you're displaced or when you're not um, comfortable in your own living environment, it's hard on you, right? So imagine if you were homeless, like Danny Cahill in New York, what he what he must feel and deal with every day. He writes in every month asking for prayers on the prayer wall, w1md.com slash prayer. And he says, I'm 70 years old. I'm living homeless in New York City for 20 years. I go to the library to get internet access and you know put out my prayer requests and listen to your podcast. That Danny is living in an extreme version of this displacement that we felt on a very tiny scale. We were never homeless and we never didn't have a roof over our heads. And we always had the option of going or renting an apartment or something. We had the means to do that. So we were in a blessed state compared to people in the world that don't have anything, right? And so we're going to take the month of May and we're going to just kind of remodel something. I just want you to get that metaphor in your head. And one thing that I think we need to remodel is this. I, I spent a lot of time in my life seeing people who are living out the consequences of pursuing the wrong things of being hungry and thirsty for stuff that never seems to satisfy them. And this this goes a long way. You look at the celebrity culture, right? You look at movie stars, for example, and rock stars and famous athletes. They are at what would seem to be the top of the world, right? They have, it seems, infinite wealth. They have fame. Everybody knows them. They have all the things that they've ever wanted that they pursued so hard. But how many of those people do you hear about? They have multiple divorces. They have drug addictions. They have alcoholism. They they, they get DUIs. They, they Something happens and they, they don't get another roll and they commit suicide or something. So they lose their athletic abilities and they become, you know, very unhealthy. Babe Ruth, the greatest baseball player perhaps of all time, at least in his era, died in his 50s from alcoholism and smoking and just, you know, the consequences of years of doing those things. And so, you know, people get to the top of what the world seems to offer them and it's not enough. And I would, I would ask you, if you're a person who drinks alcohol or you're a person who you know, uses um, shopping to, to numb yourself from the realities of the world, if you're a person who pours yourself into gambling or, or pursues relationships, how many times have you awakened in the morning and said to yourself something like, gosh, I wish I'd had one more glass of wine. I wish I'd had one more encounter with that person I'm not married to. I wish I'd had one more um turn at the craps tables you know i wish i'd had one more how many how many times have you ever said that it's usually the opposite it's usually we wake up in the mornings and we say God, i wish i hadn't done that man i wish i'd left it a little bit earlier man i wish i hadn't sent that text message. man i wish i hadn't opened that bottle man i wish i had not done that i wish i hadn't said that thing i wish i hadn't you know called that person that that deal i wish i hadn't pursued that relationship we often look back with regret because the things we were pursuing weren't things that were actually capable of satisfying us all right nobody ever wakes up in the morning and wish they had done more of something that's actually not good for them nobody ever wakes up and says man i wish i had eaten one more bag of cheetos last night i would feel so much better this morning nobody does that because that thing that you're pursuing wasn't actually ever capable of of satisfying you. We all know this on some level. We, we know that when we're pursuing wealth, for example, we know that having more won't actually make us happier. It might solve some problems for us. It might make us a little bit more secure financially, but it won't actually make us happier. And the reason you know that is because every time you get a raise, you find a way to spend that and you're not actually happier, you're just more leveraged. Right. I mean, for most people, there are some people who are wiser than that, but that's the reality for most people. Your your satisfaction and peace and joy and all those things just don't come from having more. This goes way back to Exodus chapter 16 in the Bible when God was literally leading the people on their journey with fire at night and a cloud in the day and he was literally providing them food quail in the evening and man or quail in the evening and manna in the mornings and and, and literally giving them 
everything they needed. They, they, they lacked for nothing. They literally had everything they needed. And God would say, I'm going to put this stuff on the ground, and you, all you have to do is go pick it up, but only pick up as much as you need for that time. Just get what, I'm going to give it to you, and it's going to be all laying out there, but only get as much as you need. And some people would think, I need to grab some more of that. I need to have more. I need, it doesn't matter what God says, I'm going to grab as much as I want. And guess what happened? Exodus chapter 16, it says, the stuff they picked up that was more than they needed, it rotted. By the next morning, it was full of maggots, and it was no good for anybody. And then God was mad at them for not obeying him and not letting him be enough, not letting him give enough. And Paul says, my grace, Jesus says to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. And so I would just say, if if you're hungry, if you keep finding yourself hungry, and you keep pouring yourself into something, and you keep finding yourself hungry and thirsty, maybe you're hungry and thirsty for the wrong stuff. Matthew 5, 6, Jesus says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. John four fourteen, Jesus said, the, the woman at the well says, Whoever drinks of the water that I will give will never thirst, but the water that I will give will become a well of water springing up to eternal life. Jesus is the living water. He says, If you drink from me, you won't ever be thirsty again. Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 34, 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Listen, the Bible says it clearly. If you hunger and thirst for righteousness, if you hunger and thirst to be more like he wants you to be, if you hunger and thirst for the things that he wants to give you, you will always have enough. You will always be filled. You will never be thirsty. So my friend, the quiet time this morning, I'm talking to me as we go into Remodel May, is if you feel empty, lost, hungry, tired, any of those things, if you're, if you're just tired and you feel poured out, the secret isn't to try to find more of the things that you've already been pursuing. The secret is not to go back and try to find some former version of yourself that you believe was better or happier. The secret is to hunger and thirst for what God wants to give you. That's what I'm going to try to do this month. The secret is to hunger and thirst for who He wants you to be, to get closer to Him, to let Him define you. Never forget Friend, I'm going to read you some scripture from Acts chapter 17. Never forget, starting in verse 26, Paul said, From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. Did you get that? Wherever you are, God put you here at this time in this place in at this time in history, in this place on planet earth, so that you would reach out for him and perhaps find him. He, he, You are where you are because he's right next to you and he wants you to reach out and let him show you what you ought to be hungry and thirsty for. Don't forget Jeremiah 29. We always go to verse 11. The 29, 11 is one of those tattoo verses that people get for, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Well, check out the context of 29, 11. It starts in verse 10, and the context is the people are in Babylonian captivity. They're in exile. They've been dragged away from their homes, and for 70 years, they're going through this horrible thing, and they can't see the end of it. They can't project in their mind that it's ever going to be better, and God says through the prophet Jeremiah, this is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future in verse 12 then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you so friends sometimes you're in the middle of the remodel you're in the middle of the hard part you're in the middle of the struggle and you can't see it well enough to believe it that God actually has a better plan for you than you can think for yourself and you're trying to grab up all the manna and all the quail that you can you're trying to drink the wrong stuff and eat the wrong stuff and pour yourself out to the wrong people and believe that some place in your past was better than the future that God has in store for you and that is not true it is a lie from the devil of hell my friend God has a plan for you and it might take seven Seventy years, but if you just he says it plain, call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. 
If you can't seem to be filled or satisfied or can't stop being thirsty, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to change what you're hungry for. Maybe it's time to change what you're thirsty for. That's my quiet time for today. That's that's what I'm working on for me as we wrap up April and go into remodel May. We're going to have some amazing things coming up. Next uh, Friday, I'm recording with uh, Dustin Bingy. Dr. Dustin Bingy is a Ph.D. from the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. He lives in Kentucky, and he's a theologian. He's written an amazing book that Tata and I just read, The Loveliest Place, The Beauty and Glory of the Church. I'm telling you, this book will rock your world about why you need to love the church. It's not about church per se it's about christ's bride and why we should love it and what it means to really know what your place is in the church and what the church is it's not a building or a group of people it's god's kingdom come to earth christ's bride and it's going to blow your mind and bingy's dustin bingy's book is going to help us remodel our lives and put some bricks in place that we might not have in place and it's going to be helpful and later in the month mark Vrogep is coming back to the podcast mark Vrogep, of course wrote one of my favorite books of all time one of the most powerful and important books about lament and learning how to pray when you're hurting um called dark clouds deep mercy He's coming back to the podcast because he, he believes that people are struggling because they don't know how to pray through their pain. Lament is a prayer offered in pain that leads to trust. And when you're going through trauma, you need to have a parallel train track of trust that will lead you through the darkness and back into the mercy and the light again. And that's what Dark Clouds, Deep Mercy is about. It's, it's learning how to take the things that are hurting us and process them in a proper way. Because what happens is we, we tend to take our pain and we internalize it and we have this inner monologue of all the things that other people are doing and all the things that we've done that are that are led, have led us to this dark place and all the things that have happened and all the ways that used to be better, all the ways our future is limited and the ways that we've lost track of who we are and all those things and our mindset goes into this dark place. But lament says, okay, bring all that stuff to God. Bring it to him and let him have it. And learn how to tell him what's going on and let him show you the track that will lead you out of it so that it those things stop being true in your mind because they're never true to him. And let him show you what is true. I know the plans I have for you, he says, a plan to prosper you and not to harm you. And you'll call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. The, the, the train tracks of lament. Trust next to trauma is how we get there. Mark Rogep's going to come back. The, the podcast in May is going to be helpful. We're going to get back into neuroscience. We're going to talk about how to remodel your finances and remodel your marriage and remodel your work and remodel your interpersonal relationships and remodel your physical stuff and remodel your brain and remodel your heart and find hope again. And May is going to be remodeling. We got the hammer in our hand from Action April, and we're going to start busting out some walls and start relaying the bricks that are going to put us back in good shape. And we're going to do it. I got two songs for you to finish out Quiet Time today. The two versions of the Hillsong song, Christ is Enough. I love this song. And if you're hungry and thirsty, that guess what? It's not a big secret. What you really need is to get closer to Him, and He'll fill you up with the living water, and you'll never be hungry or thirsty again if you just get closer to Him. So this song, Christ is Enough, is a powerful song. But I, I was searching for it this morning. I stumbled across a, a group of, I think they're European from their accents, a group, a group of kids that are amazing musicians, and they've done all these arrangements in the genre of funk music, which is very fun. I love funk music. But they've rearranged all these worship songs, and they have a channel on YouTube called Funky Worship. And if you're not into funk, it's okay. But I just want to I want to share a worship song with you in a different genre and a different style, just so you can can feel it in a different way. So we're gonna play Funky Worship's version of Christ is Enough, and then Hill Song's version of Christ is Enough. After that, just to give you a few minutes of music to kind of think and pray about these things we talked about. Listen, friend, if you can't seem to be filled, satisfied, stop being thirsty, stop being hungry. Maybe it's time to change what you're hungry for, and maybe it's time to start today. Christ is my reward in all of my devotion. Now there's nothing in this world that could ever satisfy. Through every trial, my soul will say, no turning back. I've been set free. So 